So in today's video, what I'd love to do is talk about some of the ways that we can address performance issues inside of Lightroom Classic. Now this is something that pops up every time Adobe release an update to Lightroom Classic. What we're gonna do is cover off some of the points that we can use today in our own setups to improve the performance without having to go out and buy a new computer. Because let's face it, we can't do that every time Adobe decides to update Lightroom. So the very first performance tip that I would love to share with you guys today has to do with the previews that we build for our images. Now it's common practice that when we import our images into Lightroom that we build these large one-to-one -one previews and unfortunately these one-to-one -one previews take up a lot of disk space and they can hog the performance of viewing images in Lightroom kind of like it's doing now. As I scroll through the grid view here, you can see it's taking its time to build those previews. Even inside of the film strip over here, it does take a little bit of time to build the preview. And let's go to this image over here and double click it. And you can see as we zoom in, it's not building it straight away. And we've got that little loading icon right there. So we need to deal with this performance because we like our catalog and we like to have our previews running smoothly. What we need to do is to go to our preferences tab over here. And what we need to do then is go to our catalog settings. And under the previews tab over here, you can see that my total cache is 14 gigabytes at the moment, which is quite big. What I want us to do is set this to our 2880 pixel option right here. Now, 2880 pixels, when you zoom in quickly to check your focus is more than enough. And then of course our preview quality, we can set that to high as well. So we have a good view of the quality of our images when we really want to zoom in. Now I've got my automatically discard one-to-one -one previews active or to delete after one day. I don't like to have my one-to-one -one previews if I do build them to be inside of my catalog for very long because it just wastes space and we don't have to use all of those one-to-ones that we build for each of our sessions that we import. So once that is set, what we need to then do is go over to our library module, which we're in now. We go up to library and then we are going to go and build our standard size previews. Building a standard size preview is going to be way, way better than trying to work with a one-to-one -one preview, which is a large file, and it can slow down our performance whilst working inside of Lightroom Classic. So I'm gonna scroll through my film strip, and you can see here that it's taking its sweet time to render each of these images, and that is fairly annoying when we wanna work fast and we wanna see our images ahead of time very quickly. One of the first things you'll notice about building standard previews is of course the performance. Okay, so it's built all of those previews for us and what we're going to do is actually scroll through just like we did. So we go back to our library module and then we'll click on the grid view and as we scroll through all of our images, you'll notice a marked difference. We're not having those gray preview blocks anymore because it's rendered the proper size previews for our portraits here. So for example, I can go and have a look at this image of Susan and we can zoom in and you'll notice straight away we no longer have that little loading logo that pops up. It's all there, it's very fast, it's snappy and we don't have to wait for anything, okay? So as you can see straight away, that building the correct previews substantially improves our browsing performance. Next up, I'm gonna be talking about building XMP files in the background. This is something that's actually turned on by default. And what that does is it actually records all of your slider movements over here. So if you have to take this raw file into other software outside of Adobe, that reads raw files, it's going to read that XMP file and make those adjustments to your image based on the sliders that you've adjusted here. Now, the issue with that is, is that every time you make the adjustments to any of these sliders inside of Lightroom, 
it updates that XMP file in the background. Let's just go and have a look at what that actually looks like on the operating system. So if I right click this image and say show in folder, you'll see here that we've got this XMP file that's being created in the background. So for image SCC 01493.arw, that's a raw file, it creates this little XMP file. So every time we actually make these adjustments over here, it sends those adjustments into that little file in the background, and that can actually slow down the performance of Lightroom when you're messing around with the sliders. Sometimes we'll get these jittery sliders, and that is possibly one of the reasons for that. So we need to go and turn that off. How do we do that? Again, we need to go over to our catalog settings, and then we go over to our metadata tab right here, and we turn this off. Unless, of course, you need those XMP changes written into the XMP files so that can be used in other bits of software, then you would leave that on. Moving on to the next performance upgrade to Lightroom. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to our preferences pane here again, and I'm gonna go over to performance because this is something else that they've added in fairly recently. And this has to do with use GPU for preview generation. And what we're going to do is we're gonna click on this in a moment, but right now I've got it set to use graphics processor, it's set to auto, and then use GPU for preview generation, that's set to auto. And I've got a fairly small system here. I've only got an Apple M2 Pro. So it says here, your system automatically supports full acceleration. So for my system, I've got it all set to auto and it's optimized for that. Let's go and have a look at what kind of information they wanna talk about here. So use GPU for preview generation, open Lightroom Classic and navigate to the Lightroom Classic preferences performance pane. That's exactly where we came from now. And auto is a recommended option, okay? So Lightroom Classic will use a GPU for preview generation only if the following criteria are met. The GPU has 16 gigabyte or more of VRAM. That's a huge GPU to have in order to render those previews inside of Lightroom. For the average user on the street, like you and I, an eight gigabyte is probably a standard GPU that you're gonna have in a standard editing computer. Now, unless you're a gamer, you might have a GPU, which is probably 12 gigabytes or maybe 24 gigabytes. In those cases, yes, the GPU will help preview your images, or in this case here, use GPU for preview generation. It's going to work very, very nicely. In my case, it says here, GPU supports full acceleration by default. Now, GPU, in my case, however, it does seem to be the option that's ideal. So yeah, I'm a happy bunny. I'm gonna leave mine like that. Now, here's the thing. If you've got a GPU that's underpowered, it might be worth actually turning this off if you've got issues with performance. So have a look at that and make a calculated decision. This is one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about, but here it is. We can use this to improve the performance of Lightroom. Have a look at it and make your decision as to where you wanna set it. If what I'm talking about in terms of these optimizations don't work, then it is potentially an issue with your GPU trying to render things inside of Lightroom. And in that case, you might wanna turn it off. So it's as simple as that. The next and most obvious thing to look at inside of Lightroom is optimize your catalog. From time to time, we need to optimize our catalog. So my catalog was last optimized on the 18th of the 8th, 2025. So that's just a few days ago. So yes, we need to look at optimizing our catalog from time to time just to smoothen the performance. This is something that is fairly obvious. So I'm just reminding you guys that it is there. Optimize your catalog, simple as that. Now, the other obvious thing, or I would say not so obvious thing, is making sure that you quit any kind of background processes that can impact the performance of Lightroom. It's no good having 
other applications open in the background that hog your VRAM or hog your systems RAM or CPU. And we need to turn those off. So if you're concentrating on a shoot and you're concentrating on editing, obviously you're gonna have Lightroom open. And if you use Photoshop in your process, those are the two applications you wanna have open. You don't wanna have 101 other applications open in the background because it's going to affect the performance of Lightroom. And subsequently, if you do take your images into Photoshop, you're going to have performance issues in the background. So make sure that you quit any kind of background application that's gonna hog the performance of Lightroom and Photoshop. So there you have it. It's very, very basic, folks. One more thing that we can talk about here in terms of our performance, and if we go to Lightroom Classic and we go to our preferences over here, there is one other little thing that we can do here, and that is increase our camera raw cache settings. Now, right now, I've only got mine set to five gigabytes because I'm storing this cache on my local operating system drive. Now, it is recommended that if you want to have a larger cache built, that you perhaps put this cache or this camera raw cache onto an external drive, which is maybe an SSD drive, and then you can punch it up to like 80 gigabytes. And having that little extra cache in the background is gonna certainly help the performance of Lightroom Classic. So there you have it. I hope that you're able to use some of these performance tips that I've discussed today to improve your experience in Lightroom. And if you've enjoyed this video today, I'd love to invite you to subscribe. And you know, if you want to get the updates on my channel, obviously, as we know, click the little bell icon so that you get a notification as to when my next video releases. Thank you very much for your awesome support today, and we'll see you in the next session. Cheers for now.